This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic. This is an introduction to revenue, cost, and profit functions. Revenue refers to how much money you collect from selling a certain number of items. So here's an example. You sell 220 cups of tea for 75 cents per cup. What is your revenue? In other words, you're sitting out, let's say, at a fair, and during the day you sell 220 cups to passers-by for 75 cents a cup. How much money do you have you now collected? I bet you could figure this out without a formula or algebra. You would just multiply 220 times 75 cents. So hopefully that's what you would get for your answer. You do 220 cups and it was 75 cents each. And so in dollars and cents, that would be $165. All right, what if we wanted to write this as a function? In other words, we're not sure how many cups of tea we have. That's where the variable comes into place. Well, let's say x is the number of items sold. We're not sure how many items we're going to sell, but we know how much we're going to sell it for. Let's say we're going to call that P. There's a certain price. So our revenue function, R of X, right, depending on how many items we sell, will be the price for selling each item by times how many items we sell, P times X. So here's the example. If you sell T for 75 cents per cup, write the revenue function for selling X cups of T. Try that on your own. In other words, R of X, how would you fill this in? Well, it says what you just do the price times X and the price is given at 75 cents. Let's use decimals because usually we do things in dollars and cents. So that would be 0.75 X and there it is. There is our revenue function. Now, so for instance, our problem a second ago is what if you sold 220 cups. Well, so we would just use this function here. How much would it be? How much was our revenue for 220? We figured that out without using algebra, but to write it this way, we would say R of 220, it said would be 0 0.75 times 220, and that is our 100 and $65, for instance. This is what happens uh, in cash registers when you go to the store and they're selling something at 75 cents each and if the person puts in that you're buying 10 items, it automatically knows to take a multiply by 10. It's, it's all algebra. Now, of course, your revenue is not your profit because it usually costs you something to be able to sell something. So if the cost function refers to the money spent to produce a certain number of items to sell. So let's say you had to buy an electric kettle for $30 and you also had to buy some tea bags at eight cents each. So here's the question. If you make 220 cups of tea, right, because you're going to sell that many, what was your cost? Well, the basic cost of just the tea alone will be um, 220 cups but 8 cents per tea bag. So for all the tea bags we would have 8 times 220, 0 0.08 times 220. Right, so let's figure that out. That would be $17.60. But you had to spend more than that you had to buy this electric kettle. Let's say you didn't have it. Now, if you did, you already had that, there would be no cost, but you actually had to also pay $30 for that. So, you actually had to spend $47.60 up front before you even started selling the tea. So, this is for all the units. So this is for the, the T itself, and this here, this is called our fixed cost. For one particular, you know, to even get started, you needed to have an electric kettle to heat up the water. So this gives rise to our cost function right here. Let's see, I have to put 
on the right. So let's say we were producing X items and it costs a certain amount per item. That would be like in this case your tea bag. Um, then we have, we've sold X products. What happened? Our C of X, now keep in mind C in this case is uppercase and it's a function. It's a name of a function like the cost of selling X items. That's what that means. It's whatever you had to pay up front. That's your fixed cost. In this case, that would be your kettle. Plus, well, how much it cost you to produce all those items, right? Which was the cost per each tea bag times how many tea bags you sold. So CX. So this is our cost function. So we have our revenue function, which was one thing that was little p times x, the price that you were selling it for. C here is the cost to you per tea bag. In this case, C is simply a variable. Right? Like maybe it's 8 cents per tea bag. It might have been 15 cents per tea bag. We don't know. It depends what you're selling. So let's see if we could write the cost function here. So you bought an electric kettle for $30. Tea bags are 8 cents each. Write the cost for selling 8, for buying, you know, and getting ready, 8 bags of tea. All right, so try this on your own. In other words, you want to write C of X. All right, so try that. So what's your fixed cost? Well, that was your 30 bucks. And what about producing X bags of tea, the price per each cup, right, or the cost per each cup was eight cents and we're producing X cups of tea, so that would be 0 0.08X. And there's our cost function. So we started off with this problem that you buy an electric kettle for $30, tea bags cost eight cents, and we were asked the question, What's your cost for 220 cups of tea? So we could actually just ask that for 30 cups of tea, 220 cups of tea, etc., and we'll be able to just use our cost function to quickly get the answer. So let's look at that. Once we write this cost function, now the question is what's the cost for 220 cups of tea? We could just put it right in C of 220 is 30 plus. 0.08 times 220, and then we just do that calculation again. 30 plus 0.08 times 220, which I think was 1760, 17.6. But remember, we're talking about money, so we would write 4760. The nice thing about having this cost function, if I could ask a different question, what would it be if I sold 400 cups of tea, 500 cups of tea, etc.? And you would just put the different variable in for x and you'd have it each time. All right, so here's an example. You buy an electric kettle for $30. Tea bags cost you 8 cents each. And then you sell 220 cups of tea for 75 cents each. How much profit did you make? All right, well, previously in the video, we figured out the revenue for 220 cups was 165. And the cost um, to you for making those 220 cups, given that fixed cost and all the tea bags, was $47.60. So hopefully you would realize that you would just subtract to get your profit. And so that gives us $117.60. Is the profit you would have made. And that's exactly the profit function. Profit is the revenue minus your cost. So if we take this function, we really just want the profit for selling 220 cups of tea. That would be R of 220 minus C of 220 which we already computed, and our revenue, remember how we got the revenue? We did 75 cents times 220, and that was our $165. And then our cost, if you recall how we did that, we had the $30 fixed, and then we did 0.08 times 220, and when we did that calculation, we got 47.60. 
I'm just going to put 47.6. And that gave us our $117.40. In our example, the fixed cost was $30, the unit cost per tea bag was $0.08, cents, and our selling price was $0.75. Cents. So our revenue function was R of X is 0.75X, our cost function was 30 plus 0.08X, and our profit function then is always the revenue, right, minus how much it cost us. So if you wanted to figure out what the profit function was just by writing one function, we would take the 0.75x and subtract 30 plus 0.08x. And of course, you're going to have to distribute that minus sign. 0.75x minus 30 minus 0.08x. And let's see, just move this a little bit up. So we've got 0.75 minus that 0.08, which is 0.67 x minus 30. So what would our profit be on 220 items? We could put that directly in and say 0 0.67 times 220 minus 30 and compute that. So after doing the multiplication and subtracting, we get $117.40. And note that's exactly the same answer we got when we just did the revenue separately and got 165, did the cost separately, got 47, and subtracted. So it's up to you whether you want to do the revenue separate answer, do the cost function, and then subtract. Or you can, in general, do the, the uh, one function for the profit like we did here um, by actually doing your algebra, r of x minus c of x, and getting one function in this case, this is our profit function. Let's see if you can see that. I think I'm a little bit low. There we go. All right, so p of x is just 0.67x minus 30. Then you have one function, you're asked for the profit. Now I want to see, oh, I wonder how much I would make if I sold 500 cups of coffee. You would just put in 500 for x, and you have your answer. All right, I hope you um, learned something new in this video. This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic.